The Iowa Hawkeyes launching Big Ten play in Piscataway against a Scarlet Knights team poised for their first 4-0 start in 10 years. We'll talk about the Hawks and the Knights here in a moment in a prime time showdown out east. But first, I want to talk about the people that help make this possible. First of all, Iowa floor covering their tough core click together 4 point five millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring it's available right now with self-installation at just a 269 per foot rate that's great value it's better value than you'll find at any of the big box stores and you'll get customer service like you can't imagine contact the guys at iowa floor covering visit iowafloorcovering.com slash diy that's iowafloorcovering.com slash diy also ascent nutrition and this stuff they're ascent coffee it's pure it's mold and mycotoxin free and it's available at 15 percent off with the code hawkeyes visit goascentnutrition.com use this code hawkeyes and get yourself ready for another busy day with ascent coffee and finally last but not least randy engel and under the kitchen he's doing great stuff in the realm of hawkeye art visit under the kitchen on facebook for original hawkeye prints of your favorite Iowa Hawkeyes. And of course, uh, opportunity is still to sponsor our post game show with Coach John Patterson, uh, which I would have to say is uh, really grown over the past year. Appreciate all the support for that show from you, the listener. But if you want to sponsor and grow your business, this is an excellent opportunity, especially as we head into Big Ten play. Just reach out to me from the eye of the storm at outlook.com, from the eye of the storm at outlook.com to learn about partnerships and an opportunity to grow your business. So Iowa and Rutgers kicking things off in a night showdown in Piscataway, a 6 p.m. start for the Hawkeyes. Uh, Of course, this is a game where uh, both offenses are expected to struggle. We have two defenses that, as of right now, are ranked in in total defense rankings nationally in the top 10 of the FBS. That's certainly impressive. We know what Iowa has done um, holding, even just this past week, shutting Nevada out despite Several delays in that game due to weather, 27-0 shutout over um, an an average at best Nevada offense, but uh, a shutout nonetheless. Uh, Rutgers, we know they struggled last week against Temple. They do want to run the ball. It's been hard at times to run the ball effectively, although I thought they did fairly well running the football against Boston College, an ACC team. You look at their numbers against BC, they had over 200 yards rushing and won that game on the road. A bit of a surprise week one. Now, do I think Boston College is great? No, they'll probably miss out on a bowl game, uh, especially with ACC play looming. Uh, Rutgers also beat Wagner, put up tons of numbers against Wagner. Rutgers' offensive numbers don't even look good with the win against uh, against Wagner, but they'll likely be down at least one of their quarterbacks, maybe two of them. Noah Vedrill has been out since fall camp. Uh, Wimsat, the other guy who is expected to be kind of the heir apparent at quarterback, he is now out. Simon, uh, Evan Simon, the third stringer, expected to be the starter, but uh, Shiano not closing the door on Vedral or Wimsat returning. But if Simon were to somehow uh, get hurt, they're down to walk-ons at that position. So very thin, razor thin at quarterback. We know Iowa could be down Keegan Johnson. Kirk Ferentz would not tip his cap one way or the other on uh, KJ's status. But it sounds like maybe he had a bit of a setback following some play against Nevada. Did he come back too soon? I guess that's up for debate. Both these teams are going to struggle to move the ball, folks. Um, This is a very good Rutgers defense, a Rutgers defense that's predicated on stopping the run. Honestly, it's a a similar defense to what Iowa wants to do. Um, I I don't know that Rutgers is going to be able to move the ball against Iowa's defense. Again, they want to run the football. They don't have a quarterback that they have a ton of confidence in getting the ball down the field. It is going to be a packed house. That's going to be the one variable here that I think is such an oddity because we're not used to seeing Rutgers fill that stadium there reaching sellout status now the over under last i checked was around like 33 and a half which would be like a record (laughs) for lowest over under that's uh, an incredible factoid if you will Um, i expect this game to be close and people who are writing off records i I don't understand that if you have a close game and head into the fourth quarter with that crowd at night chance to make history for rutgers seriously i mean this is their first chance for a 4-0 start in 10 years um, th- this is going to be an opportunity for that crowd to be the 12th man, if you will, and make a huge impact. And I expect the fans in Piscataway to show up in earnest and to make their voices heard. Now, it does remind me a bit of the game last year against Maryland. Iowa going to Maryland. The Terrapins were undefeated at the time, and Iowa blew Maryland out. Put up, a, I think, what, 56 points on, on Maryland? There is a difference here, though. Mike Loxley's team's not known for their defense 
Greg Schiano's teams are. I think this is a better coach team than uh, that Maryland team was last year. So I don't expect Iowa to be able to put up a ton of points. I foresee this game being played in the single digits or the teens. I'll be surprised if either team reaches 20. And frankly, I, I, I like Iowa's chances to win solely based upon the fact that I don't know where Rutgers is. I don't know how Rutgers is going to score. I at least have confidence that Iowa could break a, a big run or two. We saw Caleb Johnson knock off a couple, albeit against a poor Nevada defense last week. And I think Iowa's punt return game is getting better. Arlen Bruce looked better in that role last week. Again, albeit at home against a poor G5 team in Nevada. Um, we did see last week Rutgers on the ground struggle to run the ball against the Temple Owls, just 142 rushing yards, 3.5 yards per rush. Now, Iowa wasn't much better, and it was those numbers were inflated. Iowa's numbers just over four uh, yards per carry inflated because of the two big runs from Caleb Johnson. You can't take those away, but that is a simple fact. These two teams play very similarly. Both struggle on offense, both struggle at the quarterback position, and both have youth on that side of the, of the football, and both are dealing with injuries. So these are very similar teams, and honestly, at this point, um, I would favor Iowa. I mean, they're favored right now by more than I would certainly favor them by. I think they're favored by seven and a half, but I do expect this game to be close. The biggest storyline, and people keep talking about it, Tory Taylor, one of the best punters in the country, Adam Corsack, one of the best punters in the country. Both guys should have been um, much stronger candidates for the Ray Guy Award last year, and um, I know there's been talk about bias towards punters down south. Both guys are terrific, and uh, I don't know that you're proud of your punter being your best player, but I think both these guys, I don't know if we'll ever say that about another college football game all year, the two most indispensable players in the field this Saturday are likely the punters. Corsac's never been blocked. Iowa has had a knack this year of blocking punts. They've even had a couple that they probably should have blocked. Jackson Rexroth kind of over-pursued on a punt last week. We saw Lucas Van Ness narrowly miss on a block, I believe, against uh, South Dakota State in week one. So this is a fascinating matchup. I do believe the key to victory for Iowa this week is finding a way to produce a special teams or defensive score. It's one thing to be able to produce short fields, but both these defense are good enough, and I think the margin for error is so slim in this game. Whoever can create a pick six, whoever can create maybe a blocked punt return for a touchdown or at least get deep into the red zone to create an uber short field it makes it almost impossible for the opposing defense i really do think whoever can produce points defensively all right it's not about running the ball it's not about quarterback play it's points defensively in this game um, will win it because i just think it's going to be played tight the score is going to be low and it's going to be anybody's game heading into the fourth quarter. We'll, of course, be live with you following the game for Iowa post game with From the Hawkeye of the Storm, and then we'll be back live with a post game show with Coach Don Patterson. Sunday night, he's doing a Missouri Valley Conference football game, actually down in Springfield at Missouri State, Missouri State, South Dakota State, Saturday. So we've got coverage for you all weekend long. My picks for the week, including this game, my official score prediction for this game set to be released tomorrow. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Iowa and Rutgers and Piscataway on Saturday night.